Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Afghanistan. We have just landed at Kabul National Airport in the local time is 3. 15 past 3 and also temperature is reported 22 degrees Celsius. For safety reasons, please... Dette er enten den beste ideen jeg har hatt, eller den verste. De kakekledde diplomatene, journalistene og kontraktørene er alle travle og vil ha fly så kjapt som mulig. Jeg har det ikke travlt. Reisen min ned begynte et år før, da jeg leste om festivalen San Central lokalisert i Kabul. Hello. Hello, Travis. How you doing? I'm doing fine. So are you... Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, good. Okay. Sure. Okay, let's, uh, if you are in the zone, let's just uh, pick up from uh, where we left. En kjapp e-post til festivalsjefen Travis Beard var alt som skulle til for å få et intervju over telefon i oktober 2011. Jeg var ikke alene. Rolling Stone, BBC, Al Jazeera og et utall andre interesserte hadde alle enten tatt tur ned dit eller gjort som meg, intervjuet per mail, Skype eller telefon. Og her ble frø sobb. Hvor kult hadde det ikke vært å stikke ned til Afghanistan på en alternativ kunst- og kulturfestival? Over jul 2011 så jeg på hjemmesiden til festivalen at de søkte til frivillige, og jeg sendte inn en søknad, og jeg presiserte at jeg hadde minimale tekniske feideheter, men at jeg gjerne ville lage en radiodokumentar om festivalen. Det skulle ta nærmere et år med korrespondanse over e-post før jeg fikk endelig klarsignal om å komme ned til Kabul. Da jeg fortalte slekt og venner hvor jeg skulle, ble jeg stort sett møtt med entusiasme, men også skepsis og enkelte bønnefalt meg om ikke dra. Det er ikke vanskelig å skjønne hvorfor. Vi har blitt foret med nyheter om krigen som har rast i landet i over ti år, og når man da får en positiv nyhet fra landet, så blir kontrasten ganske stor. Vi vil oppdatere deg på en brekende historie som vi bringer til deg ut av Afghanistan. Seks britiske soldater er mistet. Det nummer av USA militære døde har surpassed 2000. Hvis vi ikke sikrer denne populasjonen, er det svært å se hvordan kampanjen kan succede. Vi kan se hvordan det kommer ut av alle. Vi kan se hvordan det kommer ut av alle. It may be something much of the world takes for granted, but it's something Afghanistan hasn't seen in over three decades, a rock festival. This is your baby, it's in its it second is. year. Second year running, yes. You've had any Afghan acts have you got? We have a, up to, I think, seven today, including a couple of uh, mixed acts between international and Afghan. In a country where public performing is typically considered shameful and un-Islamic, two Afghan female rappers took center stage on Wednesday. You're used to the sound of the bombings. Now we get used to the sound of metal. Sound central music in Afghanistan. Festivalgjengen jobber hardt. De fester kanskje to ganger i måneden, og da slipper de til gjengjeld ut mye damp, men tempoet tas opp igjen umiddelbart. Da jeg kom inn i Sound Central hovedkvarteret på min tredje dag i landet, så var aktiviteten til å ta og føle på. Huset fungerer i tillegg som et kollektiv for de som driver festivalen, og mange av de er journalister, eller eks-journalister. Festivalsjef Travis Beard betraktes som en veteran i Afghanistan. Han kom dit allerede som journalist i 2001, og har bodd der siden 2006. Han sitter i hjertet til festivalen foran sin beste venn, en Mac, og rommet er strødd med mikrofonstativ, laptopper og kameraudstyr. Travis, kan jeg bare plasse dette her? Det er en recorder. Vi 
Vi er fremdeles i oppvarmingsdagene til festivalen, og i dag skal Kabels metalband District Unknown spille sammen med Paranoid Earthling, et metalband fra Sri Lanka. Jeg spør Travis om hvilke utfordringer man møter hvis man skal arrangere en festival i Afghanistan. First thing is really um, getting the band here is always a challenge. Then once you've got the bands here, it's actually getting them to venues, stages, sound checks on time. It's always a uh, issue because you know, punctuality is not top of the act and priority. So that's always a bitch. Um, besides that, I mean, sound is always an issue. Like, for example, my brother's gone down to the venue today and they're saying, no, you can't have... Um, access to the, the venue today for X or Y reason, blah, 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 same old bullshit. It does, it's not like the worst where things work like clockwork, you know, you go to Switzerland and the trains are on fucking time. Trains are always half an hour late here. Always. So you kind of just go, fuck it, yeah, all right, whatever, we'll, we'll sort it out, kind of thing. Um, besides that, our publicity campaigns sort of been... I don't want to fuck PDF, you can't. No, it's something else. Anyway, um, publicity campaigns obviously always a challenge because of the environment we're working in. Um, so getting it out on TV, getting it out poster wise, and then social networking is always the thing. What was that for? No, say bye. I'll see you later. Where are you going? Go to work. Oh, right, quick question. Travis er opptatt, men jeg tar sjansen på et spørsmål til. Hovedagene til festivalen skal avholdes på et fransk kultursenter som er underlagt den franske ambassaden, og senteret går under akronymet IFA. Grunnet at Muhammed-karikaturer hadde blitt vist i franske medier, så hadde festivalen blitt utsatt med noen dager, og for å gi vestlig et lite stikk med ekstra paranoia, så var YouTube nede grunnet filmen Innocence of Muslims. Men igjen, dette er Afghanistan, og Travis avdramatiserer det hele. People obviously jump straight to the conclusion that it is security is an issue. And it's not, it's just, you know, unlike in the West, you know, when you when you book a festival, you don't really have parameters that can change that most of the time. Whereas here we always do. So we're a lot more um, used to being fluid with, you know, things like dates. I mean, we're always, you know, having to postpone gigs and, and, and concerts and whatever else for X, Y reason. It's just the nature of doing stuff here. So for us it's no big deal, but other people go, oh my god, you've got a security situation, man, fuck, fuck, fuck. Like, yeah, whatever. Um, so, at the end of the day, the show must go on, as we say. Dallas is coward, ride the pole, rise above, we're gonna rise above, make this court. Travis er et lekst av det hårde humør, og jeg blir tatt til siden av kjæresten til Travis, Ellie Keeley, som også er Sound Central's fotograf. Hun forteller ytterligere om gjengen som driver festivalen. Most people who seem to be involved in the festival really are obsessed with music, number one. This is such a range of people, but I think it is all brought together by they all, want, they all play in bands here, or they all love music to it. To, to start in some shape or form so it is a real eclectic mix like you've got the archies who have worked at isaf ex-military um i think the people in terms of the actual running of the process it's actually a pretty small crew but there are a lot of people who are involved although yeah i mean obviously journalists get involved um but the people who run it really mainly are travis um my sister or myself last year and close afghans with, I mean, the help of Humayun, who has the venue, so they're kind of using that this year as, a, you know, a place for everyone to congregate and meet, and he's also putting on a lot of gigs. So it's kind of a mix of people. <laughs> Til musikken til Afghanistans Elvis Ahmad Shahir går praten mellom mig og Ellie Keeley videre. Shahir blev på ordran general drept under den marxistiske regeringen på slutten av 70-tallet. Etter det har han vært regnet som en kulturell og musikalsk gudfar i Afghanistan. Det har gått tre tiår siden Amir Shadir ble drept. Men hva med afghanske band nå? Du har noen nøkkelband i kabel i dag. Afghanistans mest populære band er indiebandet Kabel Dreams. Det er også Afghanistans største band. District Unknown er Kabels metalband, og White City er et alternativt rockband som Travis Beard spiller i, sammen med svensken Andreas Stefansson og Ruth Owen, som også har fortid i det brittiske bandet Echo Belly. 
är er fundamentet stark nog för att band ska kunna uppstå och överleva i kabel i dag. I think here specifically there are some very key bands um, that are involved in this scene. People who aren't really who have kind of moved away from pop music essentially. Afghan culture is pop music. That's what they like. It's what they've always, you know, listened to Pakistani pop, that kind of thing. So, I think you've basically got um, these alternative kind of uh, slightly alternative thinking Afghans who have had the opportunity to be exposed to different types of music and have kind of taken it on. I mean, if you look at District Unknown, their stuff is totally, I mean, I, it's like nothing you've ever seen before in this country. It's incredibly dark, it's very heavy, but they really came from nothing. They came from literally like watching a couple of YouTube clips and going, oh yeah, that sounds really cool. Uh, let's try and do that. And none of them actually played an instrument at all. Definitely the support of internationals has helped um, them explore different types of music because i.e. if they didn't have the studio here or they didn't have the support of Hamayun or the support of Travis, where they would have got to is probably not that far in terms of also just if you just think about equipment, like there are no guitars in this country, there are no drum kits. Um, in terms of them establishing themselves in this community, I think it's pretty impossible. They're certainly, they're like small groups that follow these people, but it is small. And where they go after this is a, is a completely different question. I mean, you know, the likes of Carble Dreams, they can, you know, become popular in a country like this because they're not entirely extreme. Yes, they're playing guitars and drums but their music is quite is still quite pop-esque I mean they class themselves as an indie band but I mean it, it can still appeal to a wide audience in this country people like them, people like listening to their music the likes of This Year Unknown or White Page are a little bit I think harder for people to get to grips with but they're, they're very determined and, and they want to play that kind of music so they're going to play it Travis og Ellie skulle ikke jeg få mulighet til å snakke så mye med under festivaldagene grunnet hektisk aktivitet, og jeg hadde på et tidspunkt tenkt å kalle dokumentaren Chasing Travis Beard. De fleste spørsmålene måtte jeg lagre hodet, for ferden gikk rundt i kabel støve tilbakeater på motorsykler eller bak på planer på en pickup som roadie. Dagene endte som regel med at du kom stuptratt inn døra og la deg til å sove hvor enn du var forlagt. Genom TV är er man vant til å se Kabul som en by hvor bygningene er omgitt av høye murer og metalldører og porter. Kom man først innenfor, så kan det skjule seg en liten overraskelse. Et godt eksempel er The Venue, som er en restaurant og et kunstnerisk fristed med et nydelig utområde. Og det andre eksempelet er The International Club, og det sistnevnte stedet ga meg et støkk. Det ligger i et relativt anonymt nablag i Kabul, hvor fattigdommen kan spottes rett utenfor portene. Du kan däremot se att stedet har en viss viktighet siden de har egne bevæpnede vakter og egen vaktbu utenfor. Men det forbereder deg ikke på vad som venter deg innenfor. The International Club har egen bar, scene, restaurant og hold deg fast, et utområde med svømmebasseng. The International Club var også stedet hvor oppvarmingsdagene til festivalen blev avholdt og afghansk ungdom hoppet og danset mens småbrisende vestlige så på mens de trampet takten. Dette var også stedet hvor jeg møtte vokalisten og gitarristen i Afghanistans største og mest kjente band, Kabul Dreams. Suleman er ofte å se på det venue og rundt de andre bandene som er basert i Kabul. På The International Club spør jeg Suleman om hvordan det er å være musiker i Kabul. Well, first of all, I can say it's completely different from other like bands around the world because uh, our situation is different and the way we start and the way we play is completely different and like for instance, we're not making out of like making money out of this music actually we're investing or like we're spending money and i mean i mean i'm personally i'm i work on media like about five years i'm a photographer and reporter so we we're doing other stuff too we have like family life and like some other things and 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 uh, speaking of uh shows we it's not often uh, like america or i don't know or uk i think the best teacher of like of us is is it's internet because we are in the middle of nowhere somehow i mean musically 
So it's internet that we are downloading music and reading articles and like reading album reviews and listen again and again and again to realize I mean what kind of music is it and I'm still like to get inspired and it's we don't have such a schools or something to follow or like the, our community is very small but I'm sure that it's growing and it's, it's going to be big like in future and I think the internet is our best friend at this point. <laughs> But when it comes to Sound Central and you know the the Westerners that run it and some some uh, locals, I just wonder how important it has that influence been uh, when it comes to Sound Central also being in a band. Uh, that was really good opportunity for us to show our uh, music first of all, and this is really good to people like to know them that there is something you guys are missing like. I mean, different. I mean, okay, we have traditional music in our country, and it's really sweet. It's beautiful, and but 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 it's here. No one's gonna change it or take it out. You know, like it's impossible. But we need some other like new genres that are coming, and we have to get to that music. And when something new is coming, everyone is loving it because our people they really like music and you cannot even stop them to uh, to like you cannot hide the music or you cannot stop them to listen speaking of uh, Sound Central Music Festival I mean Travis did amazing thing and he gave like huge opportunity for like for everyone I, I can say and and this is I I can imagine how it's really difficult because um, we're organizing such a festival in a situation that we have the security you know how it is I'm sure that next year it's gonna be even bigger and bigger because last year it was only one day I mentioned and this year it was three days and it wasn't only music festival it was art festival I mean that's really good and I'm really hopeful about future of uh, Afghan music. So can you see already now after this festival that kind of the message that the festival brings has spread to the Afghan youth? Well definitely because uh, I noticed many people came second day and third day as well. I mean because they, l they love that vibe or the energy and it's definitely going to change because one of the really good examples last year we had only few bands like Afghan bands whatever they play it doesn't matter like I don't want to label them rock or something it doesn't matter but they want to play but this year we had like two times more and I'm sure the next year it's, it's going to be like more and more and more and even now some guys are coming down and asking like how we can learn play the guitar and is there any like class or something we want to participate I mean we want to join to that class and I was like oh cool that's really good I mean there's a process well definitely we don't want to change like we we don't we don't want a miracle which is impossible it needs the time to do everything after like three decades of war so but I think um, message was completely positive and, and energetic I think Jeg forlater Sulman og lar han henge med resten av bandmedlemmene i Kabel Dreams og resten av vennene sine på The International Club. Jeg støter derimot på Huma Jun, og navnet hans blir nevnt like ofte som Travis sitt navn. Han er innehaveren av stedet, og det mange vil kalle institusjonen som heter The Venue. I likhet med The International Club ligger The Venue et ganske anonymt nablag i Kabel. Fra de støvete og humpete gatene utenfor til metallinnhengningen innenfor, blir du hilst velkommen med en graffiti med følgende påskrift. Beware of artists. They mix with all classes of society and are therefore the most dangerous. The Venue er et slags kunstnerisk fristed med eget studio, et utområde med graffitikunst og servering. De arrangerer sine egne events, om det så er innenfor kunst og eller musikk. 
Under festivalen fungerade stedet som en tomleplats för musikere och festivalens kunstnere, och det var ofta jams som du kan höra i bakgrunden. På The Venue kunde vara edru, høy som gallepiggen siden hars fløt rundt i store kvanta, eller god gammeldags dritings. Drikkeprisene var for øvrig norsk standard, rundt 9 dollar boksen, og her skal jeg slutte med turistvennlig information. Med et sted som går under navnet The Venue, og når det arrangeres en festival i samme by, som du er en del av, men du kunne ikke finne frem om så livet avhang av deg, så ligger premissene godt til rette for forvirring. Well, which one are we talking about? The one we were at yesterday or the one we're going to? The one with the... Oh, it's called the venue. You know the venue? It's actually called, that's the name, the place where we were yesterday. The place where we met. Okay, that's so that's where we're going. The venue. Yeah, okay, that's okay. okay. <laughs> no, it's a pretty confusing name. Uh, like, uh, in London, there's a dance school called The Place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Place. You know which place I'm talking about? Yeah, The Place. What do you mean? No, The Place, Place. <laughs> The Venue er det jeg har i tankene på utområdet til International Club. Ved bassengkanten slår jeg en prat med innavaren Humayun. Bakteppet er afghanske sikkerhetsvakter og konsertgjengere, men også vestlige expats som nipper whisky og inhalerer nikotin og eller ganja. Jeg spør Humayun om hvordan han fikk ideen om å starte The Venue, og by the way, det du hører i bakgrunnen er bassengets fontene. Det var en idé som jeg tenkte på. About. And I was thinking about it because we didn't have any venue where we could ta- take rock bands or artists or painters or calligraphists or, I mean, the whole genre of, of, of the art uh, to go and, and where the musicians have the freedom to perform. Like, there's no place in the city where two musicians can walk in and just pick up a guitar and, and pick up a darbuka or, or some kind of percussion and perform together for each other or perform just for... For their, for their joy. So, having all these problems, uh, I walked into this place, which is called the venue now, and I thought of it, the future, the future get together for the artist, and and it has been successful. Uh, we we get to have visitors from everywhere, whoever comes to Kabul, especially art involved. The first thing they get to know about is the venue, since. We are not an institution. We are not run by governments, NGOs or anything. We are private sector. We are very independent. Uh, we don't believe in policies created by the others. Uh, we give freedom to the artists and to the musicians to express what they want to express in there. Selv om Sound Central har fått mye positiv presse, så er det mange som interesserer sig for voldelighetene i landet, og jeg inkluderer mig selv her i så måte. Selv om det kan ske ting i Kabul, så er byen rimelig sikker, og nærvær av sikkerhetsstyrker er stort. Humayun er ingen hvem som helst. Han kommer fra Afghanistan, men har også studert i Pakistan. Jeg spør Humayun om vad som er de vanligste vrangforestillingene som vestlige har om Kabul. It's not the fault of the diplomats or foreigners because they have been uh, given the wrong information by the media, which is like war, ruined buildings, uh, poor people. Of course, we have all that, but we have a different life here, which is there are people who are optimistic about the future. There are people who are living and want to live uh, beyond today. There are people who want to bring a change. These are the, the biggest misconception, the wrong information sent from Afghanistan to all over the world, and nobody else is to be blamed, but I think media or, uh, or the audience who is hungry or thirsty for negative publicity of, 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 of a country or city or situation. Så hvilke mål har Humayun for The Venue og kanskje Sound Central? Dette var et spørsmål jeg hadde stilt ham tidligere under festivalens tumulter. 
I det humor ska svara så sker det som någon gång sker i Kabul, ett strömbrott och du får ett intryck i hur han skickligt professionella journalister uppträder. We have given the opportunity to the youth of Afghanistan to 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 uh, enjoy a moment which is uh, different different than Can we do this question again cuz Yeah sure. Uh, what the fuck did I t- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd like concentrating on the uh, I think if I'm quoting you correctly, I ran into you the other day and you told me something to the effect of you didn't want to put on shows for bored expats, um, but you wanted the, the, the youth of Afghanistan to get involved. Well, if, if you look at the show tonight that we did, there were like some bored people who came to the show and treated the concert as their background music for their social conversation, and whereas if you compare it to the show we did two, two days ago at the Kabul University that show was treated as a show the audience was nice the audience was cheerful the audience made noise when there was noise to be made and they kept quiet when it was time to listen um, and and I think that's what the youth of Afghanistan needs a moment of freedom where they walk into a place and they forget about everything else They're the family matters the politics the the shit that is hap- that that has been happening around so and and i think it's important to to give performances to the uh, afghan youth because from these performances as i st- said earlier more youth gets um, they, they, they get the energy and they get the motivation of coming up to the stage and really speaking out their voice. Med homoyuns ord om afghansk ungdoms energi, motivation och bruka sin egen stämma rättar uppmärksamhet mot den del av festivalen som tilltaler mig mest. Detta är också en sida av festivalen som kanske fått mest uppmärksamhet och fått västligt att klö sig hur och påstå ett dubbelt WTF på sin Facebook-profil. Hur då är det möjligt och hur då tör det? Detta handlar om metal i Kabul. Det er ikke totalt ukjent å blande inn østlige elementer i metal, men vad inspiration angår så har det rettet sig mot Midtøsten og Gips og Babylons mystik, og poenget blir hamret inn av death metal bandet Nile. Da jeg ankom Kabul ble plukket opp av en langhåret kar med pilotbriller. Vi utvekslet våre respektive jedud og satt oss inn i en av Kabels yellow taxis. Dette her var Kvais, gitarrist i Kabels metalband District Unknown. But how did you get into metal as an Afghan youth? Before I have heard about Afghan, because I burned Kabul, I was never seen other country. I was spent all my time in Afghanistan. Mm. I was uh, before I started uh, metal music. I was heard indie music or mm. Afghan music. It was famous mm. in uh, Afghanistan country but when my cousin come from India he brought some DVDs of uh, a metal song from Metallica I was here with the, I was meet that guy at home he play one song of uh, Metallica and I was didn't before that I didn't know what's guitar what's drum what's bass when he played I was asked from him what's that what kind of uh, instrument they are using. He said, guitar, drum, bass. I said, seriously? Yeah. He said, yes, dude. <laughs> then we decided, let's make a metal music because there was no metal music or rock music in oh. Afghanistan. Det kuleste med District of None er at de bare plukket opp sine respektive instrumenter og begynte å spille. Dette burde også være det mest interessante om bandet, men det er også andre historier som overskygger dette. De spilte med maske før, og det har visst nok blitt truet av Taliban eller andre fraksjoner. Ja, yeah, vi we, we hadde mange problemer i Kabul. Når vi startet 
metal music in Afghanistan. We had a long hair, uh, with long beard, okay. like this stuff. We were, that was in a metal style. We yeah. were standing there, we were walking at the road. Uh, we had a problem at office. They didn't let long hair and long beard. Then we had a problem. Some uh, Taliban guys, our our drama. He is an engineer. He's studying in engineer uh, class, and he had a problem at university. Then we cut our hair and beard. We we are like another normal person. We are working at the way, but. On that time, we decided to let's because on that time there was one band district unknown was we decided to put mask and perform. Mm. Then we saw other bands grow up, other artists scam. Then we decided let's fuck up mask, let's do it, whatever, what happened, we don't care. But you mentioned problems. What kind of problems uh, did you face? I mean, was it a threat of violence or was it just... Uh yeah, it's... Uh, we should care about ourselves and our families. Mm -hmm. You know, rock music is in Afghanistan new music. Mm -hmm. They didn't know about rock music. Everyone is thinking they are sat satanists or like this stuff. But other people, some in our geeks, a lot of uh, our friends coming. They all know about metal music, but we couldn't announce in television or commercial to put posting that we had a concert, public camp. To it's all it's new step of uh, rock music in Kabul. Uh, but uh, a lot of people didn't want to. Uh, they had an didn't have a fresh opinion about rock music. Fra Sand Central hovedkvarteret og nabolagets minaret blir oppmerksomheten rettet mot de tre hoveddagene for festivalen og hovedvennen AFA i Kabels bevoktede grønne zone. Sikkerhetstiltakene er harde her. Det er en massiv stålbarriere foran porten, og du må gjennom en metalldetektor før du kommer inn og har det med deg et kamera, så må dette sjekkes for eksplosiver. Stedet er bevoktet av afghanske soldater, og skulle det komme vestlige diplomater på besøk, så har de med seg egne livaktør. Det franske kultursenteret er stort, og innenfor møter jeg District of Nones Trommis, Pedram. Vi kommer inn på det paradoxale med å spille et metalband i Kabul. Du sa meg faktisk i dag at du har gjort mer interviews enn shows. Det er veldig sant. Faktisk, alle journalister internasjonale, når de hører at det er et metalband i Afghanistan, de er like, wow, la oss gå og snakke med disse folk. Og det betyr ikke at vi spiller bra musikk. Det betyr at det faktum at vi er fra Afghanistan og spiller metalmusikk i seg selv er så vanlig, du vet. Så hvordan får dere et equipment, og hvordan får dere musikken her? Det er veldig vanlig her. Jeg mener, det er veldig om drømmen. Jeg vet hvert og hvert piece som eksisterer i Kabul. Hvert og hvert brukbare piece av drømmen som eksisterer. in Kabul. I know all of them because they are very rare. It's like we got maximum like 50 pieces. You know, you see what I mean? Like there are like maybe four or five toms in town. Uh, I mean, same for guitars for everything. Everybody knows what exists in town and if a, a member of a band buys something, everybody starts to know about it. Because there are not many bands in here. It's like maybe less than 10, 10 bands, all Afghan internationals, all together less than 10. But, um, but people share their things. I mean, sometimes it's a bit you know, uh, not comfortable to have your things and not knowing where they are, but um, but then you have to share because there are things that you always need. Uh, but it's it's like a very you know small, not that small, but it's like a community that people connect to each other, like a family. As I mean, I'm not a type of person that has a lot of message to the youth of country and international people, but uh, but if I had one, I would say, look. I'm doing this and if anybody else all around the world can do it, I can do it, I'm a human being and that's it. You know, having a having an ID saying I'm from Afghanistan doesn't change anything. Det er vanskelig for festivalen å få en internasjonal artister, grunnet den oppfatningen eller misoppfatningen av sikkerhetssituasjonen i Kabul. 
Men de lyckes med att få in sangeren Omar fra Pakistan, Ariana Delevari fra USA och det slankiske metal- og rockebandet Pernard Earthling. Som besökne till Kabul må jeg innrømme at jeg hadde en viss spenning i kroppen før avreisa, og de berømmelige sommerfølgene hade blitt til en bikuba. Da jeg møter gjengen i Pernard Earthling, spør jeg vokalist Mirshad om vad de tänkte før de reiste. Vi var ikke så afraid, fordi vi hade en similar situation. Vi hade en etnisk konflikt for 30 år, and I mean, we were the lucky ones. We were in Colombo, so they are like it was pretty much like a bomb goes here, Zali bomb goes there, and like we are there. And what they show on TV is not the reality; it's yeah. different. So we want that the appearance and our loved ones and all this stuff. They were like very. Really <laughs> oh, you go to Afghanistan? What? You go in there? Like people is it? Oh, there is, is there music there? What the hell? So we came here. We want to come here and see what it's like, man. And we are really enjoying it. The people are really good here. What do you think of the reception you got from the Afghan <coughs> youth? We were surprised. <coughs> as in, I, we, we've seen like the earlier footage, but we actually experienced it as a, as a whole on that night. Like, you know, them pounding up and down. And <laughs> I can see something, a real heavy thing coming out here, because youth here are like, very suppressed over the whole law system here and um, only now like things are beginning so this is like the start of it this is the seed that's getting planted for the huge tree say example like you come you see a band like a band performing say oh, young people come and they want to do it too so that's one fact where you're increasing people wanted to do music and people enjoy music and like it's a, it's freedom right like people need that sort of freedom mentally so she giving all that and like it's alternative music so it's different styles of music where so many people being introduced to this music i so. think the like of 30 years of war in this country i think people need a break now yeah and they lacked all this entertainment for 30 years right but something like this is new, right? And uh, I think they need it. Metal som subkultur och musikgenre ska träffa dem mitt i trynne och i mellangulvet. Och både District of None och Paranoid Earthling grejde detta. Afghansk ungdom försökte morse och var proppfull av energi föran scenen. Det var ett noe surrealistisk syn, noe som blev forsterket av at festivalen under hoveddagene var tørrlagt uten at dette la noen demper på stemningen. Det er ikke Camp C for å skilde, for å si det sånn. Du får også mye oppmerksomhet ved å gå rundt med metal og punk t-skjorter. Da jeg gikk rundt med DRI t-skjorter mi, kom det et kameracrew bort til mig og spurte om jeg kunne si «I love rock». Jeg fornektet meg ikke. Du må ha noen gram mot for å spille i metalband i Kabul. Men hva mot gjelder, så er det noen artister som fronter dette hardere enn andre. De gangene du har vært på Fors, eller sittet ved stuboet til mor og far hvor Afghanistan har vært tema, så har diskusjonen kanskje dreid seg om krigen. Terror, Taliban, men også et annet tema som gjør det vanskelig for vestlige å snakke om Afghanistan med ikke-ladede termer. Uh, hi, I'm Ariana Delawari. I'm a, a musician and a filmmaker, <laughs> and I'm Afghan American. So Ruth, supreme goddess of all creation, <laughs> according to all the Afghan males here. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I'm a little overwhelmed with the reaction, but uh, I guess it's a good thing that they like the music we're making. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Robin Reisick, and I've been studying cello for numerous years. It's sort of I'm trained cellist. Um, and I live in Afghanistan, and we have a project called Sound Studies Projects. Robin, Ruth og Ariana var noen av de kvinnene jeg møtte under festivalen. Du hadde kvinnelige kunstnere og til og med kvinnelige hiphopartister, men hovedvekten av de jeg møtte var journalister, NGO'er, eller under en eller annen funksjon eller titel som tilsier at de jobber og bor i Afghanistan. Kabul kan være fylt i randen av macho-attitud. Det kommer litt an på hvem du henger med, forståelig nok. 
Därför kunde det vara väldigt befriande att snacka med kvinnor till stede. En så förståelig kommandor blev sagt i walkie-talkies eller gigantiska livvakter till västliga ambassadpersonal gick runt på festivalområdet på AFA. De afghanska soldaterna som hade vakthålla gick hellrevis utväpnat runt. Selvom hovedfokuset med festivalen skal være opplevelsen av musik og kunst, så har Sound Central også en rolle som innbefatter kunnskapsformidling i form av workshops og paneldebatter. Og det var under en slik debatt at jeg først kom i kontakt med Ariano Delavari. And it was like one of those amazing surprises about Kabul where, you know, everybody knows how to fix everything. And like, because... Med sitt upphav fra Afghanistan men uppväxt i Kalifornien är er hon kanske en bro mellan öst och väst. Det som har er hevet över en vär tvil är er att hon kan bevega publikum. Arianas blanding av östliga elementer i musiken men också västliga gör att publikum klapper, ler, gråter och dansar. Spørsmålet som er betent for oss vestlige går på kvinner og deres liv og mangel på rettigheter i Afghanistan. Afghanske kvinner er for oss i Vesten evig brent inn på vår kollektive nettinne som ansiktsløse og totalt tillegget av en burka. Hvis man også supplerer med grovkornede videoer som viser talebansolater som fysisk avstraffer kvinner, eller läser nyhetsreportasjer eller böcker om den patriarkalske innordningen i en landsby eller innenfor husets fire vegger, så skjønner man fort at bokhandlerne i Kabul ikke läser KK. Hvordan stiller så Ariana sig til denne problematikken? I try to be very, I'm very conscious of the way I communicate with the audience as well as like before and after my set. I don't I'm not here to impose my, you know, what I do. And I'm also not here to just, like, take the stage. You know, I'm here to share the stage, and I'm here to support what's already happening. And and I'm a, I mean, it, as much as this is my heritage and I'm part of it, I'm also a little bit of a visitor to it. So it's a, it's delicate for me. I want to make sure that I'm always really conscious of but at the same time it's good for the guys to see me up there so that they can start getting used to the idea of an Afghan woman and and the women were really really responsive yesterday which is beautiful but uh, you know yesterday on the one hand the women were really responsive and I saw my friend downstairs get up and she sang a hip hop song which is incredible and she's 22 but then on the other hand yesterday I heard a story about a, a music school where children the little girls when they were trying to take music classes one of the professors told them that he would fail them if they took the class and I heard about another school where the kids weren't allowed to play music and it's not even just bridging a gap between cultures it's bridging a gap between generations and uh, I think that's something we really need to focus on it's not just about focusing on the girls because the girls all want to do it it's more about their parents um, because the parents that grew up in Taliban times don't understand like their grandparents understand it's this one generation is that one of your goals with your music to see uh, an Afghan woman picking up their uh, guitar and come to Sound Central I guess yeah (laughs) I think that's probably why I'm here yeah I mean because it's not you know like I said I live in LA and I play all over and I play in different parts you know play in different parts of the world and stuff and for me it's also extra special because the subject of my music is Afghanistan a lot and the instrumentation um which is really funny because, in fact, I think that some of the sounds that and the instrumentation of my music is more Afghan than any of the bands play. <laughs> uh, only I sing in English most of the time, but the actual melody and instrumentation is almost more. And I think that's beautiful. It's like everybody wants what isn't quite what they're used to. So I grew up like so drenched and immersed in pop music that it, it, I'm not interested in American sounding pop music but they haven't and so they're just like you know there's a metal band and a punk band and it, it's rad you know but also 
so I mean, finding your way in America, but other yeah. countries have more also in Afghanistan. Yeah, I um, sure. So how does that affect you? I think that Afghans who understand like the last 30 years have an understanding of like initially why we came, you know, like why we're here to provide security. And there is an issue within this country of security. On the other hand, it's been taking a long time and there are so many casualties and so it's hard because I, I understand that we're, I, I feel that I understand that we need to be here for security but I also breaks my heart anytime anyone is killed or anything and so I I just try to stay away from that because I I feel like if I do my part to bring love between these cultures, like if I'm going back and telling my the Americans I meet how beautiful Afghanistan is it's through my music, through my film, like so many of my friends understand so much more about this country just because they know me and like all, all of my network of fans and everything and that feels really great. And so now I'm here and connecting with the young people here and I just, you know, if I can go back and forth and kind of do that a little rather than worrying so I, I feel like it's more productive than getting in, you know, letting myself feel like this weight of war. Ariana Delavari kaprer hjerter og sinn på sin måte, og når du ser henne, får du en klump i halsen. Gamle gråter av glede, mens ungdom klapper takten. Men det var andre som også kapret afghanernes hjerter. Med hard rock dundren gjennom høytalerne, enter tre vestlige scenen. Alle sammen har bodd i landet i flere år. Dette er ekspertspannet White City, frontet av Ruth Owen. Ruth har en meget interessant fortid. Hun ble som 18-åring med i det engelske bandet Echo Belly, og er nå journalist i Afghanistan. Du får et kultursjokk når du kommer til Afghanistan. For uten å møte en kultur som er deg totalt fremmed, så er det nesten like merkelig å være blant de vestlige der. Du er redd for å stille dumme spørsmål, du får kjeft hvis du fucker opp, og det er alltid klare for å gi deg et støkk. Under en time etter å ha landet i Kabul, og med tax-free sprit på bordet, ga Ruth meg mitt første støkk under oppholdet. Jeg tror du er det Anja Oakley av uh, Afghanistan, i uh, regards til din massive gun-interest. Jeg tror det er det første jeg har fått å vite om deg, at du faktisk har pullet ut en gun i front av meg. Ja, det var veldig embarrassing. I, I, some context is probably needed for this one. It wasn't like I pulled out a gun. Basically, I was given a handgun for my birthday this year. Um, it's strange because when I first came to Afghanistan, I never shot a gun. I never even hardly seen a gun. But as a journalist, I hung out with the military a lot and learned to have a respect for firearms and realized that it takes a lot of skills to handle one. Of course, the last thing this country needs is more guns. And, you know, I don't advocate violence in any way. But I have got... Uh, interested in that in that in gunmanship as a sport and uh, that's just another facet of my personality these days we are white city good evening everyone we've come from afghanistan to play for you tonight and i want to say thank you for being here we should explain we're not actually afghan but we do live in afghanistan and the name white city comes from the united nations highest state of alert when it's White City, nobody can go out. Well, I mean, uh, looking at you perform, I see you've seen White City twice now. Uh, and uh, the one thing, uh, everybody screams your name, uh, everybody wants to get to know you, and stuff like that. So how do you react to that in Afghanistan? Um, well, I mean, the first thing I think is I'm a bit of a novelty. I mean, I was the first female to perform on stage in Afghanistan after the Taliban. And it's a little bit different for me because I'm a Westerner. Uh, so, I mean, the, the, re the real glory should go to the Afghan women who are now um, getting up on stage, um, performing rock, performing hip-hop, as you saw yesterday. There was, that's the first hip-hopper in Afghanistan. Um, but at the same time, um, I do feel proud that I was a woman getting up and performing and showing people that women in music... They don't need to get up on stage and be sexy or alluring. They just have to have talent and go out there and believe in themselves. And that's just what I did. Have 
because you're basically in two very macho worlds. So is it maybe even strong here that you have to actually build yourself up and be either level to the guys or even better than the guys? I think that's true not just in Afghanistan but the whole of the world. I've spent all my life in rock and roll proving myself. It's not just enough to be good when you're a woman, you have to be better than everyone else. And I've always tried to, on stage, be myself. So not not get up on stage and be sexy and be that person, but also not be one of the boys. You know, I don't want to be a male impersonator. I just want to be myself. And sometimes people react in strange ways to that. But uh, I, I think as long as I are true to myself as I possibly can be, no one can expect anything more. I et land hvor krig pågår og med en tilbaketrekning av de fleste NATO-styrkene i 2014, så kan det se mørkt ut for alternativ musik og kunst i Afghanistan. Det har vært få støtte til festivalen i 2012. I 2011 hade de en stor sponsor i form av US Embassy, men de trakk i 2012, og det har varit spekulert i om de ville ha en politisk one-off. Vad vil så ske efter 2014? Well, nobody knows what's going to happen after 2014, and it's a question we get asked all the time. But at the end of the day, you have to be optimistic, because what else is there? If you're not optimistic, you might as well give up now. Sure, foreigners will start leaving more, and maybe there'll be fewer places for people to play, but no one's ever going to stop doing music. Music is in people's blood, and once they start doing it, they can't stop. You know, They don't have a choice. And plus, it's important, you know, in, in a country that's always been isolated from the rest of the world, music, culture, art is a way to communicate with people that you may not have a common language with, you may not have a common culture with, but at least you have that common m- means of communication. <laughs> Ariana Ruth driver ikke bare med musik. Ruth sitt egentlig virke er som journalist, og Ariana er også filmskaper. På scenen hadde Ariana med sig en annen amerikaner på cello. Hun heter Robin Rysak. Hun er en aktiv bidragsyter til Venue, men er også med på et projekt som går under navnet Sound Studies Project. Um, well, what we do, we've set up a space, um, which is the first step, a place for people to meet. And then we offer courses both in sort of Western classical, but also in Afghan traditional. Um, Not teaching necessarily the traditional music, but using ways and allowing ways for the young Afghans to come and to focus on where they want to bring it for the future, as well as respecting the past. And so this idea of fusion and the the mixing of genres and instruments and and styles is is very much what we're a part of. Uh, And as that been challenging to you uh, musically to kind of mix the west with the, the east um it's it's always very interesting because you always get a new perspective with every musician that you work with um i think in terms of performing uh that's been the biggest challenge where do you perform what spaces do you perform in um how can you perform is it always in, in the past we used to perform for friends and sort of in private living rooms and you know hence why we created the venue so that people could get out and it is a it is a public space so you know sort of making sure that this continues and and it starts to grow um or it continues to grow how is Kabul as a cultural city? Um, I think, you know, there are certain pockets in Kabul that are very involved in, in developing in, you know, training of not only music but the arts. Uh, there's a, you know, they have a department at the university, there's a number of schools around town that teach visual arts and, and all these other genres. I think that the one thing about them is that there there's really no bond between them. They know of each other. They, you know, musicians know of musicians who study there, who study there. But, you know, the idea of collaboration, the idea of freedom of getting out and performing with people without, you know, um, any consequences is is sometimes rare here, you know. And, and, and that's really the, the idea that people can 
have a place to go after they're with after don, they're done with school, and that they can express themselves and and make their own pathway for their future career. If that's what they want, it needs to be there. Robin Blee serverte et citat fra mig. Det kommer ikke nok som en litt sleivet spøk fra Henry Rollins side, men det er kanskje en del realister der ute som føler slik. If music could stop war, then it would have ended with the great songs from Bob Dylan and Bob Marley. I mean, mu- music, music is a, music is a, it's an essential, in my opinion, it's an essential part of, of being a human, you know, in, in everything. Um, so the fact that, and even still in Afghanistan, there is music. Um, there's in Afghans, from from what I've observed, they love music. It's the idea of the musician getting on stage and playing, and the sort of you know having it as a career, as a lifestyle, and um, and a positive one at that. You know how how they're able to express themselves, and so I think you know. M- it's never it's never really stopped. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, it's 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 just it's part of what people do. Mitt uppehåll på ti dagar i Kabul var över. Hela stressen med hoddagarna med en dag förbold kvinnor och to mixt hade komplett sappat mig för krafter. Och det var totalt förlösande att bli med på efterfesten och en sista konsert på det internationella klubb. Jag tog farväl med alla jag hade mött och Robin försäkrade mig med att det said that nobody travels to Kabul just once. Då hon sa det var jag för trött att bry mig. De sista två dagarna blev tillbrakt i Sound Central Husa och Travis sörget för att jag hade skiss in till Kabul airport utan allt för mycket bryderi. Vi tog varandra hona och Travis gick och la sig. De jag mötte där nere är er någon av de mest intressanta och intensa personer jag mött. Jag blev plockad upp klockan 6 om morgonen och fem checkpoint senare var jag på Kabul airport och på väg tillbaka till Dubai. Jag tror inte att ett cheesy rockcitat är er passande för uppsummera hoppet och glädjen som afghans ungdom och vuxna har och följer. Kanske är er som Robin så fint sa det. It's what people do.